We are back, Bears Nation podcast breakdowns with myself, Kevin Lefka, and Kellen Garenstein. It's been a little while, but the fans are calling for it, Kellen, and not for many good reasons. After what we saw on Sunday, Bears lose 26 to 6 to Cleveland in what I think is the most poorly coached game in NFL history, arguably. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it'd be hard to disagree with it, that's for sure. I, I, man, and we're going to break all that down. We're going to look at a few plays that highlighted Justin Fields' strengths in town, although he was only 6 for 20. Uh, there were some things that Kellen and I saw that we liked, uh, but there was a whole lot more that we didn't like. And mo- most of that is not on the fault of Justin Fields, but more on the fault of the head coach, Matt Nagy, and his ineptitude to you know put together a game plan that tailors to his quarterback and tailors to the rest of his team. Um, so we're going to... M- more so be talking about that than we will be talking about some of the good things Justin Fields did. Um, but you just watched it back today. Colin had a game uh, for Ohio State Club football during it. You went back and watched the recording. Uh, I'm sorry you had to do that. I feel bad for you that you had to endure that pain, especially with the clicker. You can go forward and back and, and rewatch <laughs> things, man. Uh, not a great viewing experience for you that on that recording. Not, not at all, man. It's – um. You know, I, I, I say this like when a lot of times when I rant is is like if when Kyle Lowry or, or Joel Embiid go out and they score zero points in, a, in an NBA basketball game, I cannot honestly say, oh, I if you pay me X amount of money right. to go and score. I can't say that. for You know, I can't honestly say I can go in an NBA game and get a bucket. I don't know if I can do that. Um, but I know I can say that you give that offense is not good. Like, right. It's not good. The talent is not great, but it shouldn't be poor to the level of, of performance that we've seen. Let me call plays. Let me design an offense. I will get you more than one passing yard. I will get you more than six <laughs> points. I promise you the ball will go down past 15 yards down the field on more than just like two occasions the entire game. And one of them being an accident, you know, a broken play trying to make a play. So I don't know. It's, it's really bad. It's embarrassing. It, Matt Nagy should be embarrassed. And I, I think he is, but, you know, it's just more of the same. It, it's it's more of the same of what we've seen from him since he's been here. We'll have you bring up that first play, but while you're doing that, I mean, you, you're not wrong. I mean, there's times where, you know, there's people going to say, oh, come on, bro, this is the NFL. You're talking about NFL coach. There's no way you could call a game better than any NFL coach. But after what we saw on Sunday, like knowing how smart you are and how smart, like how smart you are about the game of football, I'm not I, I like I honestly agree with you. I really do. Like it was that bad. Like it really felt like this dude was like going to coach suggestions on Madden and just, you know, clicking the X button. Like that's literally what it felt like. So and quite yeah. frankly, maybe the coach suggestions on Madden would be better than what he called on Sunday. Probably. Probably. Um, but let's go into the first play uh, that you want to bring up here. Uh, yeah. I don't even know. It, it, no matter what play it is, there's a, there's a whole lot of bad. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll bring up uh, one of the few Justin Fields completions that we saw. All right. So here, obviously, like Kevin said, one of the only positive plays we saw in the passing game, the entire game from, from this offense, from Justin Fields, from Matt Nagy. And I don't know how much this is on an actually good play call happening as much as it is just two good football players and, and I guess three and four as well, making good uh, a good play. But one of the problems that we always saw with the Bears, and and if the video is choppy, I'm sorry about that, but the, the entire issue that was talked about on talk shows today, which is Monday, is the Bears did not have more than five blockers enough. Yes, The offensive line was simply overmatched. And sometimes you just go into a football game knowing that the other guys are better than you, but you still have to game plan to win. Okay, Miles Garrett, is probably the best edge rusher on the planet. You know, you played Aaron Donald two weeks ago. You 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 know how to game plan ta- for talent. You know, Aaron Donald's impact obviously was felt, but it wasn't as big as Miles Garrett was on Sunday. So what do you do? You chip, you crack, you double team, you find ways to do it. And on this play is one of the only, might be the only where David Montgomery actually gets a solid chip. Jason Peters is old. Jason Peters is bigger. He doesn't move as quick. So you have to, you have to make his set shorter. So what, what I mean a set is with him going straight back and see how his butt is basically right toward Justin Fields. He is facing the sideline. That set is completely vertical and he's turned his body completely horizontal. 
with Miles Garrett, you have to do that because he has insane bend, insane speed, insane knowledge of the game and pass rush moves. He's like I said, I think he's the best edge rusher in the game right now. How do you slow him down? Do exactly what David Montgomery does. Give him a little chip. Now, now David, or I'm sorry, not David Montgomery. Now Jason Peters is with him face to face. Now he's not, mm-hmm. he's not trying to, to, to keep an edge. Jason Peters can't, or Garrett can't make a move inside. He can't make a move outside. He has to go straight on. But that's how you game plan for Miles Garrett. There should have been more than that. There should have been more than just that. But if you look at throw itself, Justin Fields, quick little three-step. Um, some people call it the win three-step because Carson really, when he was in his prime a couple of years ago in Philly, he did a really good job of, of taking three steps because that's the depth he needed and it's the rhythm he got. But he doesn't cross that left foot over with the right. He just kind of steps it back to the toe of, the, of his right foot. And Justin throws in rhythm, off his, not off his back foot, but he transfers his weight forward. Remember, in our first film room breakdown, we talked about, hey, this right here, that's what you want. All right, this is what you want. Picture perfect, head to toe, straight up and down. And this ball is placed right on Allen Robinson's outside shoulder. I believe that is Denzel Ward. That is Denzel Ward. Yep, 21. And that's, I don't know, that might have been their best, biggest pass completion on the game. But why are me and Kevin showing you this? Is Because I told Kevin, I said, there's a couple positives I want to bring up before we start begging on Matt Nagy. This, this is the stuff that we want to see. And, right. and stuff like this, which is why we're calling – I don't know about you, actually. I know I want Matt Nagy to be fired, you. Yep. Okay. You said it, yeah. Yeah. I, I think he should be fired because it's not hard to see stuff like this is beneficial to a bad offensive line one, a, a talented receiver core that can win outside like Allen Robinson can and Darnell Mooney can, but this is a ball that should go to Robinson. And a guy, Justin Fields, who is very, very experienced in throwing – passes like this right three steps in rhythm and throw the ball deliver it outside this is stuff that me and you have broken down this is stuff on this college tape and I think Dan Orlovsky made a really good point today Matt Nagy had 149 days from the day he was drafted to the day he started to make a game plan that is designed for him and it's stuff that me and you have broken down the stuff that me and you have seen it's stuff that it seems like everyone in the world except Matt Nagy has seen and it's just stuff like this that why, why I think he should be fired, why I think he's a bad play caller. Because you're not playing, you're, you're just calling plays. You're having guys run the space. If this is the best thing you can get, a little 16-yard, you know, th- this is not Matt Nagy. This is all Justin Fields oh. making a good play. This is David Montgomery making a good chip. This is Allen Robinson making a good catch, right? That's what that is. That's really three guys making the play. It's not Matt Nagy. This is, these, are, these, are good, these are NFL players, right? So obviously they're good players, but – it's one is good because it's 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 field showing exactly what we've kind of been missing in the offense is that dead on ball placement. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, I mean, maybe it hasn't been missing. You know, I, I don't think Mr. Trubisky was, is is at fault um, or, or I don't think Matt Nagy is completely at fault for Mitch. I think Mitch was not super talented, but I mean, guys are bringing up great points, man. I mean, he's this is bad. It's been bad with Mitch. It's been bad with Nick Foles. It's been bad with Andy Dalton. And now you get Justin Fields and it's still not good. So some, you know, someone's got to point to the common denominator and we all know who it is. And it's it's not just that it was bad under all those guys. It's that it was the same. And, and that's what's that's what's confusing is you are talking about Nick Foles, Mitch Trubisky, Andy Dalton, Justin Fields. Like those are four quarterbacks who are all on different points of the QB spectrum as far as their talents and what they bring to the table. And you're seeing the same offense for every single one of them. So what does that tell you? Does he doesn't know how to adapt for the quarterback? He doesn't know how to game plan for each specific player and play to the strengths of his players. And we said this on the podcast today. It has a trickle down effect. This isn't just the quarterback position. This trickles down to offensive skill players. I mean, and this is why I say Ryan Pace isn't entirely at fault for this whole debacle because he went out there and got the resources that Matt Nagy needed. He rep, he, he has tried to replicate the Kansas city offense Matt Nagy had when he was in KC. What did he do? He got Marquise good with a man, one of the fastest players in the NFL. And he said, you know what? We'll double that up with Demir Bird. We got Cole Komet, although you have your pants on him, he's an athletic tight end who can do some things. Yes. They're not using him right. You you say, you know what? Instead of keeping Kyle Fuller, we're going to give you this offensive, you know, red zone beast in Jimmy Graham. He has one reception all year. Like the guy doesn't know how to play to his players. He he's trying to fit, you know, round pegs into square holes. He, he he's using the same same game plan he thought would work in 2018. Now in 2021, he, he's stuck in the past. He doesn't know how to adapt. He doesn't know how to change. And that's evident. Not only is that evident year to year, quarterback to quarterback, but it's also evident play to play. I mean, in this game, Miles Garrett had like 
two sacks. The Browns had three sacks in the first quarter, it seemed like. They probably had at least three in the first quarter. <clears throat> and then throughout the game, you didn't see, like you saw this one chip play here. And this happened once. You saw no other, you know, bootlegs, rollouts. What are we going to do to move the pocket? And this is what Miles Garrett said post game. He went on the mic. He said, you know what? I, 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 we didn't. We expected the Bears to move more. We expected yeah. them to get Justin Fields on the run. When your opponent is saying that, it's like, what are what are we doing here, man? So it's 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 frustrating because now you start to see talent wasted, and it starts with Justin Fields, and that's why people are concerned about what's to come in the future and the following games for as long as he isn't fired. But it it falls down to Darna Mooney and his development, a guy who was supposed to have a a blossoming year too. It falls down to Allen Robinson, a, a superstar who is only has like. I don't even know if he has 100 receiving yards on the year through three games. I, I don't I, I don't think there's any way he has over 100 receiving yards. So yeah. y- you have to make use of what you have. They have the resources to do it, and they're not utilizing it. Yeah. Real quick, I'll just get into this next clip now because um, I think we should just get the bad stuff out of the way. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll just pull this up now so we can have the good stuff to say about it. I think okay. this might have been the uh, maybe only once or twice where we really saw – um Matt Nagy moved the pocket and right. once again right we, Cleveland is Cleveland has these these wide edge rushers right Miles Garrett is 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 in a is in a five technique he's outside of Jason Peters he's faster so obviously he's going to try and rush up field um this edge player here is going to try and rush inside of Cole Komet and this boot action is designed to go to the left and it's perfectly, perfectly called, right? This is what we want. We want to get our guy moving this way. I'll just play it. And this is a well-placed ball to Allen Robinson. I think it resulted in a second and one. Probably could have been a first down just as easy. <clears throat> and the point is, like, you know, nine-yard game. We're second and one. I think they fall started and, and went back, and obviously it didn't work out. He got sacked, I think. Um, but this is this is good stuff. I put this in my Twitter post when I posted this. This is good stuff. I think it's supposed to be a smash concept. I think Darnell Mooney just gets bumped here. And you can see Allen Robinson actually is here running this hitch, the sit route. And he sees that it, it's man coverage, right? So the, sm- the smash concept is supposed to go to the corner now, but Mooney gets bumped, so he's not open. So A-Rob, if the ball is not out, A-Rob knows that either Justin, I have to get open because Mooney's not or Justin, I have to clear space for him. So what does he do? He turns up. This is really good stuff by him, by the way. This is really good scramble drill stuff. And this is this is this is also good to see because yeah. this is this is chemistry, right? This is chemistry we want to see. We don't know if Allen Robinson will be back next year, but if he does, obviously him and Justin Fields will have something going. Uh, once again, a perfectly placed ball. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the creativity here for him to, you know, get back up to the sticks, recognize where the line or where the first down marker is and then get that separation from the comeback crowd is phenomenal. But you saw kind of, you know, this happened, I think, twice. I think they did a total of two bootleg rollout plays. I think two all game. And that's where, you know, you go back to, to, to game planning and, and playing to the strengths. What is what is he looking at in practice? What what is what are they doing throughout the week? To not, to not, because this is the problem, Kellen. You saw this happen with Mitch Trubisky. You saw this happen now with Justin Fields. This is what works. This is what works for these two players. And he's unable to recognize that these things work two times. And the other most important thing, because I think you tweeted this too, I think you talked about the ineptitude of third down play calling uh, and what's going on there. We saw that third down play call. <clears throat> that was a little bit better that, uh, on that first clip you showed. It was what I think that was third and 13 or something. It was a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but when you start to get, you know, it seems like when the Bears get to third down, there's no hope. It feels hopeless. When you get to third and two, third and three, it should be a first down every single time. Watch the Arizona Cardinals. Watch the, watch the Baltimore Ravens. What do they do on third down? And, and this is something that I said going into the, the show uh, or go, going into the game this week on the show was, six at least seven design runs each week that's what you have to be looking at at least yeah. seven design runs because i put a tier yeah. system there's kyler murray and justin fields in tier two and then there's lamar jackson in tier one i I, right. I honestly think that's valid why are we not seeing more design runs it's baffling to me it's an easy first down and especially once you get into the red zone as well it, it is something you have to take advantage of because athleticism is that good i completely agree 100 percent. so i it's just i think, it's, I think those yeah. tiers are perfect yeah, I mean, and you like watch Cliff Kingsbury, watch John Harbaugh. It's not that hard. And, and and what do those guys do? 
what do they do? They talk to their quarterback and they say, hey, you know what? What, what did John Harbaugh do against the Chiefs on Sunday night with the game on the line on fourth down and three with Lamar Jackson? He said, come here, Lamar. What are we going to do? He said, okay, we're going to go gonna for go it. We're going to run. It, yeah. What would they run? Like QB counter to the right side, easy first down, game over? Like mm-hmm. the, the confidence just between the head coach and the quarterback, as you know, I mean, that's one of the most important relationships in all the sports. And it's hard to believe there's any sort of confidence because you think Justin Fields is standing there saying, you know, no, let's not do quarterback design runs. Let's just have me go in shotgun 80% of the time. No, I mean, like if, he should get on the phone with Ryan Day. Give him a call. Say, what the hell, what is he good at? You know what I mean? So uh, you got one more? Uh, I got, I got, uh, this one is not a good one, actually. This is a bad one. And it kind of, it's, I just pulled it. Um, but uh I couldn't find, find any good, good ones. I'm surprised. You yeah, I, don't, I couldn't. I know. I, I don't know. Outside of that first play of the game, the Dave Montgomery run, which they never went back to. Uh, absolutely. That was ridiculous, man. They never went back to. What was the first um, run? I think you tweeted says 16 yards. Yeah, it was 16 yards. So and he finished like 10 for 34. Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. 100 percent just stupidity. Um, but here, this is a play. Uh, I don't, I don't know Justin Fields' read on this. I don't know what Matt Nagy's thing is here because this – I think it's an RPO. But the problem is is that if he's reading this guy where his eyes are, there's nothing that is um, influencing any sort of feeling of where this guy is vacating, right? That's what RPOs are. If this guy comes down, then we're throwing where he vacated from. Same thing if we were to do it over here or, or anywhere, right? That's how, that's how it works. Um, and so that's what I think is happening here. Uh, and I want to, I don't know if this is bird or good one enough top, but regardless, you've got a guy on Denzel Ward who's a really good corner. And I think that there's, I would imagine that we're running a slant something under here, but that's not what happens. And Justin Fields gets sacked. I believe this is Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. And this is the problem I have with the play is that there is a window to throw, right? Like this right. ball could be gone right here, right now. Yeah. There, there's a hole here. But Justin Fields is looking here at Jeremiah Usukormo. And this is not like, like I'm not trying to protect Justin Fields. I think he could have delivered, but this is his first start, right? And he's just a, a young guy. And I think this is hard to do. If his eyes are here and he has to flip this way to make the throw, he doesn't see this mic. He, his eyes are on this mic before the snap. Okay. He sees a Usukormo come, and now his eyes go here. Now, there's a lot of clogging this lane, all right? And I want people to know that quarterbacks never see over linemen, all right? Linemen are 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. unless you are like Mike Glennon or Brock Osweiler, you are not seeing over linemen. <laughs> Even guys like Josh Allen, like, you know, your linemen are as tall as you. you got to see through windows. There is no window to see through here because everything is congested. So he doesn't see the mic because his eyes were away from it. The mic is dropping. He doesn't know. He probably didn't see him. He doesn't know if he's dropping, if he's blitzing, if he's just in the wash. Right. So you have to eat that, unfortunately. Right. I'm sure he would love to make a play with his legs. I'm sure he would love to go to the next part of his read, but there is nothing there to do it. And the reason why I think this is just messed up, I think they did this completely wrong, is because if if they were going to key on this guy, then they would throw to him or throw to where he's at, then they should block him if they weren't going to to do that, if he wasn't the key of the RPO. But there's a throw to be made here, but he can't make it because of the design of the play i always say matt Nagy's play calling is very very bad but his play design is just as terrible guys are just running right like there's space here but we have just a guy running deep darnell mooney is open but we can't throw to him because my qb has to flip his hips and rush his process to throwing the ball also his eyes are seeing completely different picture because they were looking here and now they're here pre-snap justin fields is a young guy right his his Mm. problem in college was changes in the defense post-snap what i'm seeing pre-snap and post-snap are different and that was where he made a lot of mistakes that's where he made a mistake against cincinnati last week where they dropped they showed cover zero and they dropped and he threw a pick right don't have my quarterback's eyes switching early in the play that just doesn't make sense Uh, you know he's not aaron Rodgers. he's not mahomes he's not there yet he's not there yet this is his first start right it doesn't make any sense to me you're not putting your guys in spaces to win yes darnell mooney is open but guess what we can't throw to him because one we didn't block it right and two, my quarterback is doing too much before this, before the throw. 
So two things when you talk about play design, I know you texted me this. You said there's no wide receiver separation. And when you start when you started to see the Bears in, in the fourth quarter get a little bit desperate and maybe start to figure out, hey, we got to get the ball out quicker. Justin Fields is making fine throws. His receivers were completely blanketed. How much of that of that lack of separation is due to play design versus the skilled playmakers not being able to get open? You know, I think the best the best coordinators, the best play callers, the best play designers are getting their guys into space. What did Alabama do? How did Devontae Smith become the first wide receiver to win a Heisman Trophy since Desmond Howard in the 90s and only the second all time? He got him the ball in space. Obviously, Devontae Smith is very talented. He's beating guys one on one. But in the national championship against Ohio State, Devontae Smith was open. He wasn't beating guys. He was running to open zones. He was running. He was running open. And if we. Right. Steve Sarkeesian was doing that. Right. And, and all these all these good coordinators that hopefully we'll talk about later that the Bears should hire Brian Dable, Kellen Moore, Joe Brady, everyone. All these guys are they're, they're getting open. And yes, you know, they have di- they have a digs. They have a DJ Moore. They have a, a C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. We have an Allen Robinson. Yeah. Right? We we you know, we have a Hulk, too. OK, so this is not like a, with Darnell Mooney can run to space, you know, anytime he wants to. And we're just not doing it. Guys are just running they're not they, there's no purpose to what they're doing and um yeah i mean alan robinson is not the greatest separator but he is a great one-on-one guy and but we don't have the time to throw that but alan robinson can shake you off a route right he's not a great vertical separator but he will shake you and, and that's what i think i started to get confused about it is you know you have such speed players on the offense and such dynamic players even when you look at dave montgomery out of the backfield as a receiver like these guys should be open with space and you know uh, you, your offense is built for yards after the catch is it not i mean you have a whole bunch you have dave montgomery who's pr- like probably top five in the league right now in broken tackles you have all the speed they already mentioned you're built for giving guys the ball in space and letting them do the rest. You know, what do you like? Yeah. Patrick Mahomes is arguably going to be the greatest player of all time, but you look at his first few years in Kansas city, a majority of his touchdown passes and a majority of the great plays that you see are him getting the ball to Tyreek Hill with five yards of separation, open space and Tyreek doing the rest or, or Travis yeah. Kelsey or Miko Harbin, whoever it may be. Like you watch the greats, you watch Dak Prescott tonight on Monday night football. You see the same thing. Like, yeah, the pinpoint actually has to be there. Yeah. You got to make the right throws, but half the battle is just getting the ball to the right man in, in, in open space and letting them do the rest. I mean, that that's what it's all about. So it's uh man, it's frustrating. And, and what I said this week on the podcast, man, I, I, I think they're going to switch play callers. I really do. I think they're going go they to go back to laser. He they should be fired. To. If he, he doesn't. should be fired. But the reason why people are going to say, Oh, you know, he, he has too much of an ego. He's still selfish. Yes, he is too selfish. And he has too much of an ego, which is why he took play calling back. Even if the bears had uh, the, the most successful offense they've had in yeah. 30 they years, were playing that well. game Mitch they're playing was playing well. well. And yeah. he said, I'm taking it back. But the reason why he did that in the first place last year was he saw the writing on the wall at whatever it was, like week 13. He's like, oh, shit, I'm going to get fired unless we win some fucking football games and make the playoffs. And he said the only way to do that is if, you know, I kind of twist the narrative. I say, you know what, Bill Lazy is going to play caller. And then we start winning football games. And then the wins, the wins still fall on me because I'm the head coach, not on Laser because he's the play caller. He's going to do the same thing. And there's people who are going to say, well, you know, what about Andy Dunn? What about Nick Foles? He goes on today and says everything's on the table with those guys. Look, I, I think we're at a point, too, and you saw this last year, where if Bill Lazer does become the play caller, he'll he, he'll have the opportunity to choose who he wants to be running that offense because you saw that last year, Bill Lazer became the play caller, and I think a week later, or even the same week that that happened, Mitch Trubisky became the starter after that six-game losing streak with Nick Foles. So those two things aren't coincidental. I think they have to make that move, and if they do, you know, you, you hopefully would like to see something more exciting than what we saw on Sunday. Yeah. I, I, I hope so. And I think I don't think Bill Lazor is a bad play caller. Right. I think the I think the whole offensive staff should be good at the end of the season. Um, sure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't think he's a bad play caller. Though. And I, at least, you know, I guess it wouldn't mean much to Bill Lazor, but to Justin Fields, it would mean a lot if there was some help, you know, going on with play calling. And, and I don't get it because clearly it was installed. You have this offense installed with Bill, you know, that, that Bill Lazor was calling different plays than Matt Nagy, but it wasn't like Bill Lager, Bill Lazor installed a whole new offense to an NFL team, you right. know, in a matter of weeks. So these are play, there, there are plays to be called that would help more. And it's just, they're not being called. I think Matt Nagy should be fired anyway, but I, I don't know how he wouldn't be if he doesn't say I'm giving up play calling. It's just not working, you know, because we're in the business of winning, man. We're in the business of winning games 
and I get your, you know, we're human beings and these are professional athletes who are still, you know, people with feelings, but <laughs> no, we're, come on, we're, dude. We're come in on. the business of winning games. <laughs> we're, 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 see, we're afraid to hurt Andy Dalton's feelings, man. Get the hell out of here. Real yeah. football teams don't care about that. That's why your boy can't sure. uh, and uh, how much you like Cam Newton, but that's why he got cut. You know, sorry. Yeah. We like Mac. See you later. You know, this yeah. is the NFL. It's football. Man. It's a business. Football. It's a business. What are talking about? Um, hey, hopefully next week, man, we're back with something more positive to talk about. Maybe Justin Fields lights it up, 300 yards, third, 40 rushing. I don't know, man. I'm, I'll I'm, be able I'm to watch it live this week. So Okay, good. Uh, I might not be able to, so I might be uh, on your end now watching the recording, but hopefully I am, and hopefully uh, you're playing Detroit, man. If you were able to beat Detroit with Trubisky six times, then – should be able to do it, Justin Fields. But at this point, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, man. We will we'll see. see. Uh, but appreciate y'all for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe uh, for our next video, for our next breakdown video. Uh, as always, for myself, Kevin, for the man, Kellen. We'll see y'all next time. Take care.